Hi, I'm Douglas Baldwin, and I wrote the cookbook Sous Vide for the Home Cook. Today I'm going to show you how I cook creme brulee sous vide. First I'm going to take four cups of heavy cream, and to that I'm going to add 4.6 ounces of sugar. To that I'm going to add 12 egg yolks, which is quite a bit, but who's counting calories anyway? Then I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of vanilla extract. A lot of people use vanilla bean, but I like to make my own vanilla extract. As you can see here, uh, I've made my own. What you do is you take about four ounces of vanilla beans and then fill up the rest of the uh, one quart canning jar with the good mid-price vodka and then you uh, let it set for two weeks to three or four months. After about a month or two, the uh, flavor is really nice and you can use it in any application you would vanilla beans. And then I'm going to add one pinch of salt. I'm going to use my blender to mix the ingredients. Now that I've used the blender to mix the ingredients together, I'm going to pour it into two one-quart Ziploc bags. You can use a gallon bag if you prefer. If you're adventurous, you can also use a standard clamp style or a chamber style vacuum sealer. The problem is that when you use a clamp style vacuum sealer, it will pull the liquid up into the bag. So I usually find it works better to just use a heavy duty freezer Ziploc bag. According to the company, they're safe up to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. And since we're only going to be cooking it at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, we should be just fine. After you pour in the uh, creme brulee mixture or custard mixture, uh, slowly seal up one side and then squeeze out as much air as you can as you seal the other side. So you can see now that I don't have a lot of air left in there and that's important because we're going to be cooking this custard at between 175 and 185 degrees. Since custards begin to set around 175 degrees and begin to curdle around 185. I usually do my custards at around 181 to 183 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not so important to be very precise at these higher temperatures. So I've heated up my sous vide supreme to 182 degrees Fahrenheit. And now I'm going to put our two quart bags with about two cups each of custard mixture in them. You may want to use some tongs because 185 degrees is quite warm and the metal will have heated up enough that it's going to be uncomfortable for you to hold. I'm going to hold the custards and keep them from floating to the surface in the convenient rack that comes with the sous vide supreme. And then I'm going to lower them in. And then put the lid on. So one of the concerns when doing custard sous vide is that the bag will float and heat unevenly. This is because the air in the bag will expand quite a bit because of the higher temperature that we're cooking at, and also some of the water will turn into water vapor and cause the bag to float. So it's about halfway through the cooking time of the custard. I'm going to take them out and agitate the bags a bit to make sure that they're cooking evenly. You can see when I take the lid off, that the, uh, the bags are floating, but the rack is holding it underneath the water. Remember to use tongs since they'll be quite hot. I usually just shake the bag around. That works pretty well for agitating. You can see that there's quite a bit of air now in the bag, which really isn't air, but water vapor. Okay, so the custard has been cooking for about 20 to 30 minutes, and now it's time to take them out and pour them into our custard containers. You can see now that quite a bit of air or water vapor has accumulated at the top of the bags, causing them to float. It's a good idea to shake them around a bit, make sure that they're well distributed. Okay, now that we've agitated the bag and taken it out of the water bath, I usually like to just cut a small one of the corners off 
so I can more easily pour it into my containers, or ramekins in this case. Okay, so now that I've filled these up, I'm going to put them in the refrigerator and after four to eight hours, they'll set nicely and be ready to serve. Welcome back. Now that I've let the custard sit in the refrigerator for a couple hours, it's set quite nicely. And now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of raw sugar on it and then caramelize the sugar with my trusty blowtorch. So I like to just carefully sprinkle the sugar on the top, a nice thin even layer. And I usually just do one at a time. I like to move it a little bit back and forth so that it gets nice and even. If you're worried about damaging your counter, an upside down cookie tray works particularly well. So that's it, now you're ready to serve it. You can hear that you can crack the nice crust. Mmm. Incredibly rich and delicious.